Are you thinking about moving to San Antonio or the surrounding hill country areas? Well, stay tuned because I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the expenses that might surprise you when you move. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Serving San Antonio. I'm Christine Johnson with Fathom Realty. Lately, I've had a lot of clients that are moving from out of state, and I've noticed that a lot of these things that I'm about to share with you are huge surprises to the people that move here. And I know that for myself included, a lot of these were expenses that I wasn't paying in the previous state that I came from. So I wanted to make a video to inform you of some of the things that might shock you when you get here. So in the state of Texas, you will pay your water bill, your electricity bill, your heat bill, and your gas bill all separate. Oh, and to include your trash bill and your HOA fees. Now, let me break that down a little bit. Some states combine those, like gas and electric, or water is every quarter, but here in Texas, you pay each one of those individually every month. Now, you also might be used to your HOA being included in your monthly mortgage. Well, that is also usually annually, semi-annually, quarterly, however your HOA does it, but it's a separate bill and is not included in your monthly mortgage. So beware of that extra expense that you need to budget for. Another big one that surprises people are the trash dues. I know where I come from, your trash is included with your HOA. Here, your trash is separate. You can choose from multiple companies, so you get to pick who you work with, but some HOAs have a built-in uh, contract with some of the um, sanitation places, like for example, my HOA has a contract with Tiger Sanitation. And we get a discount because if we, use, if we all use it in the neighborhood, then they'll discount our trash. So we don't mind, we'll use it, uh, we are not picky, but again, some people are very picky about what trash company they use. Okay, so something else people don't know about, it's called an on-site sewage facility, AKA septic. And what that means is it's its own big hole dug in the ground and that's where all of your waste goes, if you know what I mean. About 20% of the houses in Texas have a septic. You're gonna find them more out in the rural areas where there's a lot of land and the septic makes it easy for you to be able to live out there. They're very low maintenance, there's no monthly cost. Um, I highly recommend having somebody come out every couple months just to make sure everything looks good and then every couple years getting it pumped and empty. So very low maintenance. It sounds weird to people that aren't used to it. I know for me, I was like, oh, I don't ever wanna live with a septic, but the more and more I've been in real estate, the more I'm seeing how common it is. And so it's really no big deal at this point. Okay, so I'm sure most of you have heard of this, so it's not a surprise, but just in case, well water. So when you're living in those type of areas in the land with a septic, most likely you're gonna have well water as well. You will typically have to have somebody come drill the well if you're buying land and you're gonna build. But if it's a pre-owned home out on land, you're typically gonna already have a well there. Now the perks of having the well is there are no monthly water costs, which is a huge perk because if you live in a community like myself, you've got sprinklers that go off, so you pay the water bills when that happens. If you have a pool, you've gotta to pay to fill the pool. So there's a lot more extra expenses with water when you don't have a well. So wells are really low maintenance. There's no um, out-of-pocket expenses minus the maintenance fees, having somebody come and check it out, um, things along those lines. But otherwise, you're not paying a monthly water bill, which is huge savings here in Texas. Another perk about having a well is there are tons of water restrictions here. So because it's so hot and we're always in a drought, I'm gonna tell you personally, this is how I learned the hard way. Christine is from a place that rains a lot, right? I come here, we use our sprinklers, we've learned now to only put them on once a week. Um, and now after my recent encounter, I have turned them off. However, what I didn't know and what a lot of people that come here uh, come from places that don't have water restrictions don't know is that if you're on city water, they will put restrictions in place that you cannot water your grass during certain times of the day or during certain days of the week. So for example, uh, if your house ends in the number two, you can only water on Tuesdays and Thursdays. If you are caught, like myself, watering on a Tuesday and your house number does not land in a two, then you will get fined a lot of money. And now did we realize that? No, we've always had our sprinklers go off on a Tuesday. However, they pay extra for people to drive around and catch people putting sprinklers on in the middle of the night. Beware, it is a thing. Don't try and skirt the system. 
You might get away with it a few times, but eventually you will get caught. And for the record, I was not trying to skirt the system. I didn't even know there were water restrictions in place, but I uh, learned to read my email better and check my mail more often. So there's that too. So the most common thing I hear from people that are moving here is first thing on the phone. We, we want to move to Texas and we want acreage. Cool, that's great. However, you're gonna pay a lot in taxes for the amount of acreage that you have. But what people don't know is that you can also find land that has ag exemption on it and you get a huge discount on your taxes if it's ag exempt. Ag exempt can be for many different reasons. For the fact that you have animals on your property, um, the fact that you could have wildlife, so that's a wildlife exemption. You could have pecan trees or pecan trees, however you want to say it. They're all different types of exemptions. However, there are stipulations to the ag exemption. It has to be at least on 10 acres to be able to be ag exempt. Now, if you're buying this property and it's not currently ag exempt, you don't get to buy and be automatically exempt by filing for ag exemption and putting animals on your property. You have to have animals on your property for five out of seven years. So you have to be using it for whatever kind of ag exemption it is for at least five years out of a total of seven. So don't think that you're just gonna come in and get an easy break on your taxes and file for that exemption because you're on 10 acres. You have to work for it. So here's another big one. And I will say that this is one that I learned that really doesn't really make much of a difference, even though you're thinking when you're cost comparing moving here and you're looking at cost of living and the difference between your state and Texas. Well, yes, my husband would be like, well, we're not gonna pay state taxes. Cool, this is awesome, we're gonna save so much money. Wrong. When you come here, you're not paying your state taxes. However, you do pay a pretty hefty amount in your property taxes. I will say, depending on what area of San Antonio, they're higher and they're lower. In the end, it equaled out. I mean, it was pretty on par with getting rid of our state and then paying the property taxes here. So just kind of try and factor that in. I'm not saying that it's, you're not gonna save some money. I'm just saying be aware you will probably end up either breaking even or just saving it a little bit. Now what people also don't know is you can file a homestead exemption. So once you purchase your house, you can go online or go down to the tax office and you can file your homestead exemption, which will give you a discount on your taxes. So you'll only pay, that will exempt a percentage of your taxes and then you'll only pay, you'll pay a little bit lesser amount. So do not forget to file your homestead exemption. So something else I wanna to bring to your attention is beware if you live in two different counties or you pay two different counties. For example, uh, if you live in Bear County, but your school is in Kendall County, you're paying Kendall County school taxes and you're also paying Bear County taxes. What does that mean? For example, let's say you want your kids to play sports in Kendall County. There is an additional $40 to play sports. So just beware. I know that this is something that every time I sign my kids up for sports, I really hate clicking that button of additional $40. And guess what? Don't try and skirt around it. I didn't ever try and skirt, skirt around it, but I wondered if they ever knew. Well, I found out when they were revamping the baseball team in Bernie that they are now charging everybody that amount and then crediting it back because people were not paying it. So those are all the things that I could come up with based on some of my clients coming into town and things that they didn't know, things I personally didn't know that I wanted to share with you. So. If I miss anything, please mark it in the comments so I can make another video of things that people should know. Or if there's something that you might have a question about that maybe I didn't mention and it's something in your state and you wanna know how it is out here, please feel free to call, text, email, however you wanna reach me, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching another episode of Serving San Antonio. I'm Christine Johnson with Fathom Realty. I'll see you next time.